Hi there, welcome to another video from Community of Aidan Hilda. I'm Scott Brennan and I'm based on Holy Island. And I'm here with Richard and Liz. And our subject today is to look at what does it mean to be an explorer in a new monastic community? And what we're going to do is talk about where soul friendship fits into that. So maybe first thing I'll do is Liz, uh, maybe you could tell us about yourself and what does it mean to be an explorer guide? Thank you, Scott. Yes, I'm Liz Rolls. Um, I've been a member of the community of Aidan and Hilda for 11 years. I explored for one year because I just knew that I wanted to take my first voyage and become a member. I was invited to become the explorer guide a year ago. So I've been working alongside Richard in that role, welcoming people into ex the exploring within the community. And in so doing, I've enabled people to set themselves up with the necessary things that they've needed. So for example, they've needed to have a soul friend and to compile a way of life that's a true reflection of what they already do in life and then to work through that and pray through it and see if there's anything that can be added to it or removed and to make it something that's that, that's workable for them and is a reflection of how they live life. So you've actually mentioned quite a few things there. So you, you, you went through the um, explorer process yourself but you, you've you've come alongside Richard. So Richard, I'm assuming then that you're you're uh, the person with more experience here in terms of being an explorer guide. Well, I've been doing it longer. <laughs> Whether I've learned <laughs> much, I don't know. Um, yeah, I've been the explorer guide for I think uh, five years, and um, yeah, I, I joined the community as an explorer back in 2005. But unlike Liz, I wasn't quite certain when you became a voyager. So I. I kind of dithered for a, about five years and took vows in 2010. Um, I d wouldn't really want to add much to what Liz has said at all about you know welcoming people. That to me has been the the primary thing. I love hearing people's stories. It's quite extraordinary how uh, how God deals with each person in a completely unique way, and it's just lovely getting to know them as they join the community on an exploring basis. And, you, and what we often find, isn't it, that people are, um, they're looking at a new monastic way of life, aren't they? They're looking for a, a, a kind of spirituality that is holistic. Um, they're looking for a place that they can engage that's not just individualistic, but it's also community. Um, is that part of the role of the Explorer Guide then, Richard, to just kind of travel alongside them as they, they look at that? Uh, to some extent, it's a bit difficult to do it very closely because we have quite a, a large number of explorers, about 140 at the moment. Um, so we rely much more on them having a soul friend, uh, more of that later, obviously, um, uh, to do the, the more close work. But we're available always in the background to um, you know talk with people about where they're going with the way of life, whether they're struggling to find a soul friend or other issues so we we, we keep in contact we do uh, contact uh, times with explorers every few months uh, to see how, you know just how they are touch base with them and um, hopefully pick up any issues that need support from there yeah and Liz you had talked about um, language we've used different words here we've talked about explorers and voyagers and just for, so for the benefit of um people watching the the explorer is the kind of first step isn't it and then maybe you want to tell us what what does it mean to move from an explorer to a voyager well when someone's been exploring for a while and they feel i suppose a call to become a member of the community then we look at their way of life together and see whether it's something they feel comfortable with and happy with. They've obviously been living it for a while. It might be a year, it might be two years, and for some people it's even longer. Mm. But that doesn't matter. It's more about whether they feel 
that it's right for them. So when they've made that decision, prayed about it and decided to become a, a voyager, which is becoming a member of the community, they're then able to take what we call their first voyage. And that takes the form of a service, which is led by one of the um, guardians of the community or a deputy guardian. And usually in their home church, because then they're able to invite people that they worship with on a Sunday and family and friends. Yeah, so it's, it's a big deal, isn't it? It is quite a big deal. It's not a particularly long service and it doesn't need to be, but it's where that person has decided because they're going to take their first voyage, they take some vows. Mm -hmm. They present their way of life and they may choose to lay it on the altar or somewhere prominent and then take some vows that, that they're going to live by that way and they're going to adopt a prayer rhythm through the day. And, and so what you're describing there really is a process, isn't it? It uh, is. And so in terms of explorers then, and then we'll come on to this whole idea of soul friendship, we'll, we'll maybe bring some clarification around what we mean by that, but e exploring and soul friendship seem to go together, Richard. Is, is that correct? Yeah, uh, just stepping back a little bit to say what exploring means, it is really what it says on the tin, that uh, it's um, it's about trying the community's way of life and seeing if it's going to work as a support for your relationship with God and help you grow and so on. Um, <clears throat> and um, in order to do that effectively or more effectively, you can kind of do it on your own, but it's much easier if you've got somebody um, who you've trust, who you can work with, who will, uh, who you can um, go over what you're putting into your way of life with, and they can advise support encourage uh, whatever to help you refine it so that it is uh, genuinely your own thing uh, because the community doesn't have a set rule of life like some monastic communities do some traditional monastic communities where it's all laid out uh, this has um, some principles and way marks but uh, we each work out our way of life within those yeah I always think of it more like a trellis. You know, if you, yeah. if you nurture the soil of your life and you're planting seeds, the trellis is just a framework in order for growth to happen and, and to give it that kind of support. So it's a more yeah. organic way of doing it, isn't it? Um, yeah. Maybe then what would be useful from, from either of you would be to hear what's your own experience of soul friendship been like? Have you found it beneficial personally? I don't know who wants to go first. <laughs> well I feel very privileged to have had people in my life who have acted in the role of a soul friend without knowing that term so mm. before I joined the community I had someone who I was able to go to and and talk with about my faith about big questions in life and that person was um a lay minister in the Church of England, and she was able to just gently, prayerfully guide me, but not direct me, and enable, so prayerfully enable me. And yeah. that was tremendously helpful. So when I joined the community of Aidan and Hilda, I already had a an understanding of what that could mean. Um, and so I then found a soul friend, someone who was particularly close to me as a friend, and that was very helpful because she knew me well and knows me well. And it's that drawing alongside someone. Yeah. So draw alongside someone to walk with them on their journey, pray with them, discern with them. And it's wonderful to have that companion on your journey. Yes. And also, I think it's important that someone isn't afraid to ask difficult questions mm -hmm. because we have our own prayer life, our own um, spiritual disciplines, but sometimes to hear an audible voice is very helpful. And for someone to come alongside and say, well, have you thought of this? What do you think about that? Um, have you considered this? It can be quite helpful at times. Yeah, that's great. 
and, and Richard, um, within the community itself, we, we try and encourage soul friendship. But if someone was looking for a soul friend, um, what, what would you suggest in terms of a process? Because what Liz suggested there was this was someone she already knew. Are there different ways for us to per perhaps connect with soul friends? Yeah, there are. I mean, that, where Liz, Liz's experience is a good place to start. You may already, uh, a new explorer may already have uh, somebody who's a, you know, perhaps a prayer partner or or a close advisor, somebody that they talk about their faith journey with, and maybe that person is exactly the, you know, filling the role already. Yeah. And um, yeah. if they haven't got somebody like that, um, they could ask through their local ch church network if they're part of one. Um, in so some churches like Church of England or um, Catholic Church have networks of spiritual advisors who you can tap into and maybe find somebody. Um, but equally, there may be somebody within your local church or in a, a nearby church who would act in that sort of way for you. If none of those avenues seem to be opening up, then um, in the community, Liz and I have uh, a list of people who uh, are willing to act as soul friends. Um, I mean, it's difficult to match people up geographically, so often it has to work over Zoom or something like that. Uh, but we can put people in touch with somebody who might be willing to be their sole friend and, and give it a go. So a number of avenues. <clears throat> That's great. That's great. And so when we talk about soul friendship, then we're talking about like a traveling companion, really, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. It's less hierarchical. Uh, yeah. Although it does tend to be, in my experience, someone who's perhaps a page ahead. You know, they, <laughs> they don't have to be an expert, but they've travelled the path maybe a little bit and they're just encouraging you to go forward. Does, does that seem like a fair assessment? I think it helps if they're a mature Christian. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah we, we'd rather not have an immature one as a soul friend. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you need somebody who's who's able to uh, listen and discern. Um, yeah, right, you, know, right. you don't want somebody bringing their agenda in and telling you how to live your life. It's not about that. It's about picking up where you're going with God and helping you discover that. Yes. Yeah, that's great. I, I sometimes describe it as double listening because they're trying to listen yeah. to the leading of the spirit and, and also listen to the heart of the person who's speaking. Yeah, that's really a, got it in one. You kind of combine those two things and yeah. hopefully you're then doing reflective listening, aren't you? You're reflecting mm -hmm. back what you, you think you're hearing. Yeah. I, I personally think that everyone should have a soul friend. Was it Bridget of Kildare said a person without a soul friend is like a body without a head? That's right, yes. So yeah. I'm I'm keen for us all to do that. And so what, what we're kind of saying then is that within the community of Inan Hilda, exploring... And having a soul friend, they kind of go together. There isn't a, a set way to do it, is there? It's, it's, it's fairly fluid. What sort of advice would you give maybe to people who were thinking about going on this journey? Maybe they're watching this video on our website or they've seen it on YouTube or maybe on Facebook somewhere. And they're thinking, well, that sounds good to me. I don't know. Are there some next steps that we could encourage? What do you think? Yeah, well, I'd say for them to get in touch with one of us through the through the website um, and we'll um, ask them a bit about how they've got to this point. And then uh, if they'd like to, to join as an explorer, we've got a range of materials that we'll send them, which help them get started if they haven't already um, and uh, and support them in finding a soul friend uh, if they haven't already and uh, offer them some support albeit a bit limited we can't act as soul friends to every explorer for obvious reasons um so but but offering them occasional support and a bit of a steer from time to time if they want that great liz is there anything else that you would add to that um, um, i think probably we've covered everything that we need to yes nothing springs to mind except i would encourage people to get in touch even if they're not sure because we can at least have a conversation yeah. uh, if there's anything that needs more greater clarity. Yeah, that's true. We can make it clear. Mm. Wonderful. Okay, well, thank you. It's been great to have this conversation. And uh, as as has already been said, if, if you want to find out more, please get in touch with us through the various channels. So thanks for listening.
Thank you. Thanks, guys.